My angles are wrong. My bad. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everyone. In this episode of the Barra T4580 build, we're going to be tackling intercooler piping. I haven't welded stainless before. I've never done any intercooler piping before. So come on this learning journey with me and we'll plumb an intercooler in the process. In this episode, we'll quickly run through my welding experience, the design considerations, and then the intercooler piping itself. Let me tell you about my welding experience I've had a few questions about it and welding in general. I did formula student at uni where I spent a full year of my life building a race car and basically nothing else. This was easily the most rewarding and best learning experience I've ever had on a side note and I would highly recommend it to anyone studying engineering at the moment. I welded the space frame chassis among other things which gave me a really good grounding on a TIG welder. I've never welded MIG before and I'd estimate that I've done around 250 hours on a TIG torch so I'm definitely still on the amateur side of things and I've mostly done alley and mild steel work but I'm pretty comfortable on mild steel. I haven't welded anything for the past five years, but in the last six months before I started the project, I bought myself a welder and did a heap of blue bar, workbenches, outdoor table and chairs and steel racks, which helped me get back into the swing of it. I'm not at all claiming to be a good welder, but if I had to give some tips to some fellow amateurs with my very limited experience, I'd just say practice, practice, practice. Start with easy geometry like blue bar fab, and once you're comfortable, move on to the harder stuff. I also find it far quicker to just experiment and figure out the settings for myself rather than consult the internet. Intercooler piping design considerations. I'm just gonna run you through some of the design considerations that I thought about. I haven't done this before and I'm sure there are more things that I should have considered. So firstly, material, alley versus stainless. There are pros and cons to both. Fundamentally, aluminium has a higher thermal conductivity which means it can dissipate or absorb more heat per unit area. I can see this being a disadvantage or an advantage depending on what driving conditions you're in, but I don't really know and I don't have the data to back it. I chose stainless so because I always wanted to learn how to do it and I think it looks way better. The routing. I guess my logic here was try and keep it as direct as possible, no tight curves to disrupt the flow, and try and stay away from anything which gets too hot, which is actually quite easy given where my intercooler is and where the inlet and outlet are. The final thing is serviceability and reliability. I tried to minimize the amount of spare silicon joiners that I need to carry. So I've got four all up, which is a minimum amount that I could have possibly used. Ideally, I think I would have liked to have had all my silicon joiners as straight pieces, but due to packaging issues, I couldn't do this. Alrighty, so they're the considerations I thought about. Now let's jump into the design of it and making it. I'm using two and a half inch tube, 1.6 mil wall thickness and 304 stainless. So I've got my friend here, Matt, who's gonna help me out. The, uh, the rough plan from the turbo, obviously, to the intercooler. So sort of up and around, down, and then use a 90 degree silicon there. And then on the other side, same again, 90 degree silicon into a reducer, and then up to the, uh, to the inlet manifold. I've never done any stainless steel work or intercooler piping before so all I did was a, draw a picture to help me and then I wrote down what I need. Um, so that's the turbo side and that's the intake side and I wrote down a, a list I bought or a couple more bends than I thought I needed. There you go that's how I came up with the design just pen and paper nothing too complex. On the intake side we're going to reduce on the way up and then we're going to turn so we want to try and get the whole thing as low as possible so we're cutting back the 90 degree bend so to cut the stainless we're using one of these guides matt's got one for every sort of pipe size so this is a two inch guide and then we're using a saber saw and we're also using some cutting cutting compound to make it cut way better okay so this is a standard end you can see this is the end we cut Pretty close to perfectly circular, we cut about 35 mil off. So that's gonna give us an extra 35 mil clearance to the top of the bonnet. So we're gonna start with 40 amps and see how that goes. How's this for a setup in the vise? I don't have any of this stuff, but makes it a whole lot easier. Bloody beautiful. Good little side. Matt wanted to use his Ferrari welders, so he's backed up his ute with 16 meters of lead. Minus a bit too poxy for him. Poor Unimig. I opted to go for the silicon 90 degree bend here because if I used stainless, it would have been sticking out into the wheel arches. 
and we actually ended up cutting um, a fair bit off there so you can see there that's a, that's how they come stock and I just cut some off there and then I'm gonna put a hose clamp around there when I get a chance so the the pipe is obviously gonna go from here to there and we're gonna use another 45 on there so yeah getting it done coming together a lot quicker than I expected this is probably an hour's work so far so we're just cutting a bit of straight to go in between there 128 mil This is my first time doing this and I just had the sabre saw pinned and you can see I've burnt the blade there. So hot tip for the punter, go slow slow feed rate and you, you'll uh, save blades. So Matt has these really handy pipe clamps. So we're mocking it up in the car, clamping it, taking it back to the vise and then tacking it up where the hole is in the pipe clamp as you can see here. This one fits like a glove, so wrapped with this. How cool does that look? And then Matt's working, working out the other one, so we're trying to use 245s in there. And we're still using the stock intake elbow. Second one. So we've got 245s, a reducer and barbs on either end and we're gonna weld them up now. It's looking really good. I'm so happy with it. There's plenty of clearance here, like probably 20 mil on each side. Um, and yeah, well, I'll put some rubber there maybe, but at the moment it's looking good. The reason why we went up on this one, for my intake, I need to run a thick tube through a, through here. Um, I haven't quite figured that out, but we'll get onto it. So Matt's giving me a lesson on how to weld stainless 101. This is a purge line that we're using. I've never welded stainless before putting a bung in either end, and then there's, there'll be argon in the middle of this tube, which will give, a, give us a better weld result in the end. What happens if there's no argon in the tube? Ah, uh, you get porosity. Come on this journey with me. Behind the scenes, we've got my 89 year old grandfather here today, but he loves it. So I use him to uh, hold a camera and he's also good on the spanners. He was a mechanic in a previous life. So how good's that? Wrenching with my grandpa, ready to, uh, Ready to drop my first times on some stainless steel, hopefully. Got a grams? <laughs> my angles are wrong. Yeah, try and not move you. When? Um, you torch it all as soon as you finish, press the button. Yeah. And leave it exactly uh, where it is. Yeah, just for post gas. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Fuck. My bad. <laughs> Like, it's not perfect. <laughs> it's, it's very it's very far from perfect, in fact. How's your penetration, Richard? I don't know. We'll find out. Not much. So I need to go slower uh, or more down? Both. Slow with more heat. Yeah. Do you want to finish it and then we'll chop it up? Pretty hard to see in there, but um, I'm really struggling to get penetration through. I guess there's one good looking bit that I did on the outside which was way hotter and that was my final weld so I think that was this one here autofocus and then on the inside you can sort of see hopefully you can sort of see yeah the penetration through there so that's what I wanted it looking like the whole time but yeah it's just sort of struggling beautiful so Matt's just putting on a few more tacks so then when we do a full pass on one side, it won't burst open. Something I really struggled with when I was welding the stainless was slowing down the speed which I was welding at. Normally I weld reasonably fast on the mild steel and I tried all day to slow it down but what we did instead was compensate by cranking up the amp so we could weld a bit faster and hotter. Another thing that I struggled with was the torch angle so I'm used to holding it a little bit more vertical but with the nature of the pipe welding I had to go a bit more horizontal and I, I did struggle with that but I did get the hang of it by the end of the day so I think it was just more about getting used to it. All welded up. How good. So the good looking welds are all mats and I've done some shoddy ones but I did do them and no no holes blown so 
Yeah, bloody rap of that. How's the peno? Yeah, good. Can't really tell, but anyway, <laughs> it's good. Take my word for it. Realistically, if you're not purging, what are you doing? What sort of backyard operation are you running? So we're using tape to seal it. And then obviously we untape as we weld. You don't want to weld over the tape. Yeah, looking good. Ready to weld. Okay, so this is my last weld. This is also my best weld. Um, I've got good penetration on the inside and I'm bloody wrapped with the way the uh, the bead looks as well. So I know it's pretty hard to tell in the light on the camera, but yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. So that's that intercooler pipe done. What we're gonna do is quickly wash them out with water and then put them both in the car. So there we go. My stainless steel intercooler pipes are in. So I actually went two and a half inch. I was umming and ahhing whether to go two and a half or three. Um, the, the stock is two and a half, I believe, or maybe 2.75. But I guess my reasoning for going two and a half was I'm not running a wild power setup. I just want it to be, you know, like a stock setup and I want as much packaging space as possible. And look, if I'd gone three, I probably could have made it work, but not in this fashion, so the two and a half ended up being way better. I do have reducers. Yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked. I mean, have a look at it. It's super, super clean. Obviously got to put some hose clamps on it. Um, but yeah, and I could not have done this without Matt. Um, I mean, I, I could have maybe, but it would have taken me five times as long. This is, you know, a morning's, a morning's work for him and it would have taken me absolutely ages for the first time. So Matt brought over some pickling paste and we cleaned up all the heat marks off the weld just with a scourer and the pickling paste and it looks a lot nicer so now you can truly see my craftsmanship or lack thereof. So this is what I ended up doing by myself. Um, I guess is it perfect? Absolutely not. But it's my first time doing it and I'm, I'm happy with it and I'm happy with it being on the car in this current state. Some of these welds on this one here are a lot neater and that's, that's Matt's work. But overall, super stoked with it. I guess reflecting on this design, I'm not sure that it was the right thing to do reducing on the way up and then doing a curve. I think from a fluid flow perspective, it makes more sense, but I don't love how high this sits up. Um, I'll just flash back to a shot of the car now. I guess at the end of the day, this is all a learning journey for me. So what I'll try and do is package the rest of the engine bits and have a bit more of a think about it. At least I've got something neat and functioning for now. That brings us to the end of this episode. I sure as hell had a lot of fun learning how to weld stainless steel and doing the intercooler piping. So in the next episode, we're doing a radiator shroud. So come on that learning journey with me as well. If you wanna see more, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and leave a comment, drop a line. Cheers guys.